So let me reassure all of us here that we will continue to ensure that jobs are created to meet the aspirations of our children, of the young. As part of this framework, there will be a level of labour force growth, foreign manpower to augment industries, to augment areas where we need them, especially at the lower skill ends, where we increasingly will find less Singaporeans there. But we will also make sure that we develop the opportunities for locals to move up the ladder, to form the core of the workforce. We have undergone continuous economic transformation since the 60s, and at each stage we want to make sure that higher value added jobs, opportunities for our Singaporeans, and to ensure that our people are able to take up these jobs. Ms. Lo Ling mentioned briefly yesterday that EDB has been running the Strategic Attachment and Training Program since 2007, where we co-fund overseas training of Singaporeans to equip them with the necessary skills and expertise to take on higher value jobs in new growth areas. Minister Is Warren shared about the biomedical science industry, of one industry where developed and created good jobs for people. Let me share one short story. Ms. Grace Yao, she's the Executive Vice President of Fludime, Singapore, a pioneer in microfluidic technology used in biomedical research. Grace graduated from Singapore Polytechnic with a diploma in electrical engineering. She began her career as an engineering assistant in the semiconductor industry and worked her way up before transiting to the life sciences industry in 2005. Since then, she has held directorships within Fludime before assuming her current executive vice president role overseeing manufacturing operations for the company globally. These are opportunities that we have created over the years, and these are the opportunities that we aim to continue to create for our Singaporeans going forward. So we will intensify these efforts. In the financial sector, we are making concerted efforts. MES has put in place programs and initiatives to develop a strong Singaporean core. This includes efforts to raise competency of Singaporeans in areas where perhaps we may not have that much competency. So in areas such as compliance, corporate banking, wealth management. We will grow that and create those jobs for our people. MAS will also provide more scholarships to enable early career Singaporeans to develop specialist tracks in areas like quantitative finance, risk management, actual science, and specialty insurance. And these are done with the support of financial institutions and programs to nurture Singaporeans for leadership roles. Understand that we are concerned, and we all are naturally concerned about competition. Competition is there whether we like it or not. Just because an individual from Philippines, Vietnam, China is not here, doesn't mean that he's not competing with us. They are competing with us in their hometowns. As I mentioned earlier, in some sectors, good quality, white collar jobs, PME jobs for Singaporeans, accounting, HR, some of these have left Singapore. And when the whole department leaves, there are jobs that were there for Singaporeans are now somewhere else. And all the associated services supporting this department, it gets affected. And those are Singaporeans in that whole chain of things. So do we prefer to try and have some of these investments and some of these people here to augment, complement, supplement, so that at the same time, on a net basis, generate good jobs for people? Or do we take a much more protective, seemingly nationalistic position? So we will restructure. We will take a comprehensive approach to make sure that our people continue to have good education and facilities for C and continuing education and training. And this accompanied by adaptive foreign, uh, foreign manpower policies from time to time. So MOE has already announced the core participation rate will increase from 27 to 40% by 2020 with six universities offering full-time degree programs. And we will continue to invest in the CET, or Continuing Edu Education and Training System. And as part of this effort, we will invest $2.5 billion over the next five years to enhance our CET system. So we, are, we understand the manpower constraints, especially SMEs, but do send the workers for training to upgrade so that we can become more productive and effective. And we urge businesses to take a long-term view. And this CET is our strength. But we will also strengthen employment matching such as Calibre Link, working with SMEs in terms of job placements. Those will continue and be strengthened. Importantly, we will continue to calibrate our foreign manpower policies to raise quality and slow inflows. 
Employment pass numbers have fallen in 2012 for the first time since 2003. I'm not sure whether I'm able to definitively say that this will be the trend, but I think the EP framework adjustments that we've put in place are taking effect. And our EP criteria will be a moving bar, and the pay threshold will move up. And I'm watching this because as I look at entry-level pay for our graduates, our polytechnic graduates, these are things we can shape and influence. But even as we tighten, we will continue to provide every support for businesses to transit to a much more productivity-led growth and productivity-based structure. 